Hello, this is Ron Clark. I'm here with the fifth episode in my video series on my little book, Love Letter to a Dying World. Today I will be talking about the sentient self, or the astral body. And there will be exercises on the use of the senses, the conscious, intentional, and creative use of the senses. So, I hope you enjoy, and please let me know what you think. Bye-bye. So, the solitary self is both individual and collective. And that dynamic between the two results in a, a personalization of experience. We make everything relevant, uh, significant to us individually and personally. This self is what I call the sentient self. It is rooted in the senses, in how we integrate uh, our perceptions of the outside world into our being. Now, the first thing we sense is essential meaning and generally it's not recognized consciously then we start to have an emotional reaction to the essential meaning and then we start thinking about the essential meaning and these are all ways that we personalize and integrate essential meaning now the sentient self is that part of self which makes things relevant which makes things personal so it involves emotional reaction and, and thinking. So when we see something, we get this immediate hit of essential meaning, and then we start to feel about it and think about it. And it's that feeling and thinking that is the, the sentient self. Another name for the sentient self is the astral self. Now, I don't really care for that phrase too much because it really doesn't say anything about what the hell is an astral self, you know, a star being? Uh, so this sent, what it is essentially is a self that is doing the sensing. Um, the incarnated self, the uh, singular self, is the self that senses through the astral self, through the, the, the sentient self. The work this time will be around the senses and truly using the senses not just looking at things and passing hearing things and passing smelling things and passing but to really use your senses each of your senses individually we'll start with visual sense of seeing things now when we look at things we 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 see just all kinds of information the brain takes it in, but the brain doesn't notice it. The mind doesn't notice it. It sort of glosses over it and picks out the important parts. So the first exercise will be to really, truly look at something like this weed. You know, really look at it. Look at the seeds. Look at the pollen. Look at the, the form of it, the shape, the color. I, I truly look at what you're seeing. Now, for, the, for a day or two, take the opportunity to see, to truly see everything that you look at. When you look at the tree, see the shape of it, see the color, see the movement of the branches in the breeze. See, truly see everything. When you are looking, you have this peripheral vision. Truly see what's in your peripheral vision instead of just the focal point see broader. Now take a couple of days to really see everything that you encounter in life. Notice all the details. When you look at a flower, see the veins in the flower, the subtleties of color. See, see, really see it, these in this time. Really look at what you are seeing and notice all of the details. So after you've done this for a day or two, you're going to move to creating with your imagination. Now, a lot of people get confused about creative imagination and, 
and think it's some grand thing where you're creating the Taj Mahal and all this. It's not. It's really very simple. It's very natural. For example, there's the old uh, saying, uh, try to picture your mother astride a, a pink elephant naked. Now, you instantly come with an image in your mind. And that's it's visualization. It's that simple. It's that easy. So use that power creatively and intentionally. See, that's the key, using it intentionally. That's what makes it magical. That's what makes it the creative imagination. So begin with, for example, a red ball. You see a red ball before you. It's very simple. It's just like your mother on the elephant. You know, it's just, there it is. It's very simple. It's very subtle. But it's creative. You have created it. It has a power of its own because it's a thing you have created with your mind. It has a reality of its own. It's a mental reality, but still it is a reality. And given time and practice, you can take it from this mental reality to greater depth. You know, you'll have an emotional reality. If you ascribe emotions to that red ball, you know, it then ha elicits an emotional response. So you have an astral reality. And eventually, if you really work at it, uh, sort of pointlessly, you can create a physical reality. But that's aside from the point now. What you're doing is just exercising that creative imagination. So throughout your day, create these imaginations of different things. Things that are, seem appropriate to you in the moment. Whether it's a red ball or a blue flower or, you know, a green rock or whatever it is. Just practice. So you go around for an hour with a red ball in your imagination. And you, so you want to continue it. You want to carry it for longer than just a split second. So that's it for, for seeing. Now go to hearing. You know, really focus in on everything that you hear. Be quiet for a second. Hear all the bird song around you. Pick out the various birds in the distance that you can hear. Hear everything around you and really savor the sounds. Really get into the sound of the bird, the sound of the babbling brook, the sound of the traffic in the street. Any sound that presents itself to you, really hear it. And begin to look at, you know, what is your emotional response to that sound? Just like with your, your visualization, you know, with the things you see. What is your emotional response to that thing? What is your, what thoughts arise in your mind in response to it? Just focus on all of those. Take note of all of those aspects of seeing, of hearing. Hear. Really hear all the richness of sound around you. And then, after you've done that for a couple of days, really noticing all the sounds, start to imagine sounds. Imagine the sound of the bell ringing, or of the car in the street, or of someone talking, or of some music, or of the birds. Here, you create these sounds in your imagination, the same way as your mother on the pink elephant, you know, just with that ease. Just let it ease, let it flow, let it just be. Um, then we'll move to smell. Smell that rose. Really absorb the, the aroma and the quality of it, the intensity of it. Smell everything. Smell the weed. Yeah, it has a smell. Yeah. So get to know these smells that are in your environment and smell everything. Take every opportunity to smell something. And once you've done this for a couple of days, shift to creating smells. Remember that smell of the skunk and create it in your imagination. The smell of the rose, the smell of last night's dinner, uh, all these things. Just create them in your imagination. Continue with that for a couple of days. Then go to taste. Taste things. Taste the, the, the lemon. Taste the orange. 
Taste the banana. Taste the, uh, the, the, the dinner from last night. Taste everything. Thoroughly taste. Explore the flavors. And focus in on, oh, what, how does that flavor make you feel? What do you think in response to that flavor? So much of our perceptual um, ability is making these connections with things that are familiar. And that way we integrate the experience into the now. So smell everything you can smell. Taste everything you can taste. Hear everything you can hear. And see everything you can see. Do this for a day or two. And then begin to imagine. Use your creative imagination to b create the flavor of uh, your favorite dessert. You know, the strawberry ice cream, the, the, the uh, well, whatever, you know, <laughs> whatever opportunity you have to taste something and create it in your imagination. And then we move on to tactile sense. Now, this is more than just touch. It's how you feel in your body, how everything feels to you, the heat, the cold, the sensations of touch. The, 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 the pain in your, your left ankle, the, uh, uh, the tiredness in your legs, uh, everything. Feel it, thoroughly feel it, and focus in on the thoughts and the feelings, you know, the emotions that arise in a reaction to it, in response to it. So go about feeling everything, every opportunity you have to feel something, do so, and savor the feelings. Savor the subtle differences. And then, after a day or two of that, go to creating sensations. Create a feeling of heat, of cold, uh, of pain, of pleasure, uh, of soft, of rough, of prickly. Create all these sensations for yourself. Now, the, another sense, as it were, is your emotional feelings. You know, go throughout your day and just note how you are feeling emotionally at any given moment and how that varies throughout the day, how these feelings change, you, you are elated. How does elation feel? What does that feel like? How does sadness feel? What does that feel like? How does that affect you? Uh, look at your emotional responses to how you are feeling throughout the day. Go through this for a day or two, and then start to create. Start to create a feeling of happiness, a feeling of sadness, um, a feeling of calm, feeling of excitement. Go through all these different feelings and create them in your creative imagination, just like your mother on the elephant. It's very simple, very easy to do. And finally, there's the thoughts that you carry with you during the day that change throughout the day. Take note of those thoughts. What are you thinking in any given moment? Are you obsessing about something? Are you just blank? You know, are, are you really puzzling over something? Are you, you thinking about uh, so-and-so and how they uh, react to blah, blah, blah? You know, just look at and take note of the various thoughts that fill your mind throughout the day. And then, after a day or two, start creating thoughts. Create, you say, you want to be thinking uh, about something pleasant. So think about something pleasant. It's very easy. Just change your thoughts. Create, use your creative imagination to change your thoughts. Okay, so what's the point in doing this? Number one, it exercises your senses. Your senses are how you integrate into the world around you and how you integrate the world around you into yourself. So exercising your thoughts, uh, honing your uh, senses rather, um, strengthens your ability to integrate different things. It also strengthens your sentient body, your astral presence, as it were. This is important in, in magical training that you exercise, you build those astral muscles. Your ability to sense things and to create sensory impressions. 
all of this strengthens you and builds your ability in a magical sense to be creative.